this is who I found out. Uh, I guess he was had been had uh, has had some run-ins with this guy that I saw in his community that this guy was opening up. Um, it's this guy. Uh, he, he was opening up a uh, an offer to debate see somebody. Just to give you guys a little bit of a preview. First, we're going to go down the line. We're going to go from ADOS to the Selma Citizen Movement to the so-called Black Police. And then I'm going to address the whole Vietnam man and his whole channel, both of his platforms and all his subscribers. I've been trying to get anybody from Vietnam man channel to come on and join me for a dialogue. They don't want to debate. Because they don't, they, don't, they don't know the law. That's the thing. I'm here. They talking about, I'm talking about. Shahara law and all this and that. You don't you don't want to debate me because you're scared because you know you don't know the law. You don't. Get... Oh hey, peace peace. What's up? What's up, man? Uh, so anyway, hey, I think we're we're good. We're go ahead and live uh, right now. So um, like I said, if you want to if you want to take uh, uh the video, um. If you want to take the video uh, and upload it? Hey, uh, go for it. I'm not gonna not gonna judge you on it, or uh, I'm not gonna object. But um, right. so you know, you got my email, um, and so you kind of I kind of gave you some uh, subject matter uh, that we could talk about. So why don't why don't we you know why don't you go ahead and start? Um, you know, you had made some. Uh, you know declarations about you know Van Balian's crew who would, and I follow him but I have my own channel that kind of talks about this sort of subject matter so what do you think is is your biggest issue that's going on you know when people associate Moors with sovereign citizens the whole thing with the sovereign citizen being an oxymoron and where did it exist where did it derive from if you look back and you won't find it nowhere in records, like in documents, like congressional records or law cases or nothing like that. It's a made up term, just like the whole Black Lives Matter movement and stuff like that. It's well, the, not, well, the problem I would say with that is that the uh, sovereign citizen is, is uh, well, it, the term itself uh, brought out in the late 60s, late 60s, early 70s. Um, and it was a label that uh, individuals gave to themselves when say when advocating certain legal ideologies, certain legal doctrines, and certain legal tactics that the courts have struck down. So, sovereign citizen is in fact listed in court uh, in court cases. So, um, it it's it's not a it's not a, a made up term from the internet. It's a label that is that has been in use since for the last 40, uh, 40 plus years. But if you go and you look up the definition of sovereignty, you'll know citizens can't be sovereign. Because, first of all, United States is a corporation and only nations are sovereign. Hold on. Well, hold on a second. You, well, two things. Well, well, two things. I understand. What, uh, I understand. I, I, re I watched some of your video and I understand your, your, your notion that sovereigns, you know, you can't be a sovereign citizen. Um but the problem, the thing is, is that I, I'm, uh, you know, the, I, neither I nor the government nor anybody else thought up that term. It was individuals who ascribe to a certain ideology. They made it up for themselves. They, uh, they ascribe themselves as I am, you know, I may be a citizen of the United States, but I am my own person as well. And I don't have to follow, you know, the law, uh, the same way that other citizens have to, uh, the second thing that you said also talks about, and another thing I wanted to discuss is that your notion that the United States is a corporation. Are you including the states and municipalities in that as well? Yes. Okay, so yeah. uh, what makes you think that you uh, what, what makes you think that these entities are corporations, or at least, or at least, let's well, let's define our terms. What 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 do you is a corporation? Corporation is an association, a franchise, a business, something like McDonald's. Okay. 
Um, it's not a real living thing. It only exists on paper. Okay, so is it uh, is it private uh, or another word? I'm, I'm not so sorry, private, but um, uh, is it only for profit or can there be nonprofit corporations? It can be both, but you, for example, you could use the Dallas. We know they're not police, they put, but Dallas Police is a corporation. No wait, does so, wait Dallas Police in and of itself is a corporation, but not Dallas, but but not Dallas the city. The uh, Dallas city is a corporation too. But oh, so, so you think that you're saying that they're, they're two separate corporations, but they're still corporations. Yeah. Okay, so the United States itself is a corporation, and all and, of the all of the all of the fifty states are corporations but they do have organic names the terminology is more the language would have make it legal or lawful and then make it de jure or de facto okay like someone saying that they're in the state of new york you can't be in the state of new york you can't live in the state of new york new york the state of new york only exists on paper well you can be at the state of new york no, well, no, you you can't be in the state of New York. The, New York is defined by its geographical borders. Just as the United States is. Nah, no, just as a municipality. Real. I mean, you go to a Google Maps and it'll outline the geographic uh, uh, border of which, you know, the city of Dallas is located, the, you know, the state of Texas and the country of the United States. I mean, are they are no, they I'm, literal? Are they is there are they literal uh, uh, lines drawn? Because it's 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 the countries are not surrounded by um land. I mean, water. We live North America is the continent. The United States, right? Is a bank, bankrupt corporation which went bankrupt three times. Lincoln bankrupted. I want to say Kennedy. Kennedy. Then, That's a new one. Don, JFK bankrupted the United I, States. I think so. And who was the third? I want to say around the 19, 1930s or 1913 area. It's either between Woodrow Wilson, Noble Joe Ali, and um, FDR. Okay, so my in my in my experience discussing this with other other individuals who who, who believe this is uh, FDR was the one who and solely FDR was the one who bankrupted the, the United States. There 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 was no nobody ever mentioned Lincoln or Kennedy in in the, those topics. You can go look it up. Nineteen twenty five, the Certificate of Incorporation, United States corporation company at state of florida that's when it was registered 1925 wait the it, the united states incorporated itself in the state of florida united states corporation company at state of florida 1925 certificate of incorporation and how do you know that this is united states the federal government that we understand to be stand it to be it's not the federal government. They're not a federal. They're not a government. They're private. Okay, so then, it, so then it's not the federal government that's incorporated in Florida. 1871, they did the act to establish the government for District of Columbia. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're, you're, that's absolutely correct. Uh, for 1871 was the District of Columbia Organic Act. And what it did was it, it, it established a government for Washington and Georgetown. But at the municipal level, it, the, the, the Organic Act of 1871 did not create an, uh, uh, a corporation for the entirety of the federal government. It created a yeah, government yeah. For, the, for, the, for Washington, the city of Washington and Georgetown, which was also annexed and became, you know, the Washington uh, district's government. And as a matter of fact, that law was actually repealed in 1874. That had a lot to do with land too. Uh, well, the land, I don't know what you're saying about land. I'm just talking about the reorganization of uh, the government 
that was uh, to govern the District of Columbia. There is no mention of this co- uh, of a creation of a corporation or private corporation for the federal government within the text of the law, which I have read. I mean, have you read yeah. the text of the law yourself? Yeah. Okay, can you can you show me where you know where it says that you know we are creating a private corporation for the federal government? Hold on. Let me try to Google this. Let me Google this real quick. But the United States is definitely a corporation. Everybody know that. Well, no, this not everybody why, knows that. It's kind of something that you guys This is why uh, I know. This is argue. Why, listen, listen. This is why when you check out Pope Francis' letter to Obama, Motul Propio, he let us know that everybody acting as government is imposters and they all should cease and desist their spots. I'm sorry, say that they again? All... What, 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 what are you quoting now? Pope Francis, letter to Obama, civil letter, um, motul propio. I'm sorry. Yeah. What, what does that letter have anything to do with what we're discussing, though? It's a, it from the Pope to the Obama? The ones that you're calling the government and the ones who you call the federal government, they're imposters. That's what that letter proved. And motul propio, I'm going to pull it up. Okay. Uh, while, uh, while, while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead um, and share uh, uh, my screen because as, uh, as, as, it, as, it, uh, as it stands, I actually do have a copy of the law of 1871 here. Um, so I don't know. Can you see my screen right here? Hold on, hold on. I'm in a whole different screen. I, I wish I could do the share screen. How do you do that? Um, it's on Hangouts. Um, uh, you can uh, uh on the top, uh, uh, if you go to the top right, uh, a drop down will go down. There will be three dots, and it'll say Share Screen. Oh, okay, I got it. Okay, so I uh, this is the uh uh. Here, if, I don't know if you can you see it now. Your entire screen, right? Yeah. All right. It's not giving me the choice to click share. Well, I think it, uh, I I'll uh, I'm currently sharing right now, uh, and then when I do that, I can go ahead and share right. your screen as, as well. Good now? Yeah, I can see. Now, right? I can see you now. I can see where your screen now. But I'm trying to. Uh, I want you to be able to see my screen rec- uh, right okay, quick. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So I have a copy of the law of uh, 1871, and you can see it down here. Let me go ahead and, and drop it down. Um, where it says uh, an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia in February 21st, 1871, and then. It says all parts of the territory of the United States included within the limits of District of Columbia and hereby is saying created into a government by the name of the District of Columbia, which by which name it is hereby constituted a body corporate for municipal purposes and may contract and be contracted with sue and be sued and be pleaded, have a seal and exercise all powers of a municipal corporate non consistent of the Constitution of the United States and the provisions of the act. So essentially what that says is that it is creating a corporate a municipal body corporation but not the same corporation you think it is, for simply the District of Columbia. It makes no creation of any sort of private company, private entity for the federal government. And you can see the rest of the law here uh, throughout, uh, the, talking about the creation of the uh, uh, officers uh, to be elected, the, um, the rest of the administration, that Georgetown, as you can see here, will be um, annexed as part of the entity so that now Georgetown is no longer itself uh, uh, has its own charter. So Georgetown is now simply a suburb of Washington. So that that itself is the, uh, uh, the law. And um, I would like to see whether or not you know of that, uh, that it existed. Um, but I'll go ahead and stop sharing now. And then if uh, you want, uh, I could go ahead and share your screen if you want to. Uh, if you want to watch something. 
uh, right, want to share look, something, look, but look, your look, camera's look, off. Put, all right, put it like this. I'm gonna break it down real simple for you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know. Now, you do know there's two constitutions, right? There is no two constitutions. Yes, there is. There's Constitution for the United States of of America, seventeen. 71, 17, 1771, or maybe there is, wait, there is a constitution before the revolutionary I'm to, war started. I'm about to prove it to you right now. Hold on. Let me get this share screen going. It's a constitution for the United States of North America. And it's a constitution of that constitution of is the United States corporation right here. This is, of, this, is I, this is exactly what I literally just showed you, is that this supposed act of 1871, I literally just showed you this law, which says nothing of what you're, you're trying to cite to me. No, where, I don't know what, you, what you're saying. Where's that law? That's, that's don't, that don't... I just showed you the law. This is, this is, I got this direct from the congressional record. And what, is the, what do you say it again? What is that law saying? An act to provide a government for the District of Columbia, February tw passed February twenty first, eighteen seventy one. An act, an act. That means it's not real. It was an act. Yes, it is. A, an act is a real thing. An no, act it's not. becomes law. Color of law. No, you, actual under, law. Under, listen, color of law under USC two four two. But listen, what I'm trying to say is. That con even though that you're saying when was that when was that congressional record that you're saying what's the date on that and what's the name of it? it I'll show you. Let me see right here. It is the forty uh, first Congress, it third session, chapter sixty one, sixty two of eighteen seventy one, page four hundred and nineteen, approved February twenty first, eighteen seventy one. All right. Okay. Now, first of all, there's two governments that's why when you look on the back of a dollar you see the eagle and then you see the pyramid the pyramid is the moorish empire that's my government now i thought it was the all-seeing eye with nah that the, the eye is on top of the pyramid so yeah you can say it's the same thing but the eye is not connected to the pyramid for a reason but 1871 that's our constitution and y'all the other one that was incorporated was incorporated after probably okay so you're okay you're citing this no, as no, 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 uh, no, no, hold on you're no, using no, this no, as a no, you're using this as a uh, you're using this google search as an authority Pl uh, can you click the link and 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 state what it says or are you going to uh are you, you using their get... summer are you using the summary by this as an authority or are you actually are they actually citing the actual text of the law look the united states corporation operates under private international law with their own corporate constitution the various federal agencies also corporations and subsidiaries of the United States are known as department. You're taking these these headlines as truth and fact. I want evidence. I want actual evidence that this is actually what the law or the the supposed law of 1871 actually says. I don't want I don't want somebody else's opinion on what they think it says. I want to know what it is and I gave you the text of the law being discussed which says nothing of what what you're you're alleging. Hold on, because now I got to do a little digging. I got to go through something real quick. Let me start. Let me end this. Let me hold on. Give me one second. Okay. But first of all, it's two constitutions. The constitution okay. of 17. Hold on. Let me, let me finish making my all statement. Right, all right. All right. The constitution of 17. 81, 17, hold on, 17, I'm looking right now, 1791. So the Constitution of 1791, and then you got the Constitution of the United States of America, which is the corporation. And the only part of this that applies to me is Article 6, Section 2. 
Okay, so when wh when did that second constitution? When was that second constitution enacted? Well, this is constitution was made for, for the Europeans, actually. But this is the our authority. Like, how can I say this? This is to keep them in check, not for us. But we it uh, we can still use it because we the nationals. But okay, can you can you just answer? answer what I asked, do you know when this secondary constitution that you believe is illegitimate, when it was enacted? Um, let me see. It was after 1791, I want to say. It, it, because the, uh, the real only reason I asked is because I, the, the constitution that we associate uh, was enacted in 1789. All right. So that's the Constitution of the United States of America. Wait, so which one is the legitimate one? The Of the United States or for the United States? For the United States. Okay, so the one that, when was, so the legitimate one for the United States, when was that enacted? 1771. Okay, so the Constitution for the United States was enacted in 1771, five years before the outbreak of the Revolutionary War. What'd you say? So the, the you said the, the Constitution for the United States was enacted in 1771, five years before the uh, before even the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, if if it's 1771, it's the if that's the Constitution for the United States of America, yeah. 1791 it might be so they had a so i'm trying i, try, I want to i want to make sure i got this correct the the 13 colonies had uh, created a constitution for the united states before, go, you said you kept on saying 1771 Nah, I probably was wrong. 1791 but it's the constitution for the united states okay but Okay, so but uh, our traditional history has us having the United States Constitution being enacted, uh, or excuse me, uh, uh, ratified and effective as of 1789. Are so you saying that the legitimate one was uh, en uh, enacted after this uh, uh, this fraudulent one? Yeah. So the legitimate one is in place now. No. The, the the legitimate one is the republic that got overthrown. It it was overthrown when? In 1913. No, you know, a little later maybe around the 1930s closer to that area. You kind of, see the, the reason I'm asking is you're kind of throwing all these dates around. You're not exactly being, you know, uh, um, uh, concise in in you know when when X event happened. Um, because I, you know, I'm looking at you know kind of like a casual history of you know as as I understand it and as most people understand it, you know, the Constitution that we understand to be effective and currently act, uh, you know, currently active was ratified and effective as of 1789 um let me pull up some because i got a study guide well not a study guide but i got a sheet that'll give me some dates and stuff like that of things that happened but if you pull up that pull up the letter from motu propio from pope francis to obama letting him know that all governments was impostors. Well, I don't. I don't care what the words of a pope says to the president. 
the Pope owns everything on the, on on his. Uh, well, he don't own. He's in control. The Pope. He's like the highest in charge. He is the highest in charge. He's your God. Uh, no. The uh, the you know the the vast majority of uh, U.S. citizens, or excuse me, or you know col uh, colonists, or a good chunk of the the colonists at the time when the United States became the United States, they were Protestant. They they weren't under the control of the Vatican. Well, they probably wasn't under the control physically, but financially, he controlling everything. They running everything. In what oh, regard? Corporate. In what regard? Our, our the United States debt is with China and Japan. It's not with the Vatican. So I don't know why he making all the calls and he writing letters to Obama and everything. It's popping off the way it is. I mean, I, I, I guess it seems like I'm, I'm kind of getting a sense of where you're getting your information from. And in, in, in reality, it's not really there's not really a whole lot uh, um, there. No, you kind of really getting off topic because you said we was going to debate about the right to travel thing. You OK, said well, we oh, okay, about that's fair. I mean, that's fair. Government being a corporation. I'm trying to look for some more documents, some better documents so I could just prove it to you clear as day and you can go look all of this stuff up but the republic was overthrown around 1930 around the same time well you could say around 1913 around the same time the federal reserve was set up you could go check out congressional record from lewis mcfat in 1934 and that's the argument i got a, i think i got a video on that but they was arguing about how the federal reserve was unconstitutional and unlawful and they incorporated everybody and the corporations and that that um, the Constitution of not the Constitution for the Constitution of made two types of citizen. So you got a natural person like a corporation, which is your birth that not yours, but the birth certificate, Social Security. That's what they use to tax everybody and claim. Okay. Right, right. I th well, you you put out a lot here. Um, you know, you put out a lot uh, just now. Um, again, again, you keep kind of keep going back and forth as to when exactly the United the United States became fraudulent and a corporation. I mean, I've you know heard seventeen seventy one, seventeen ninety one, eighteen seventy one, now nineteen thirteen or nineteen thirty three. Eighteen sixty five. Eighteen sixty five was around the. That, uh, the, and last just, time the end of the civil war they went bankrupt yeah and then they started turning things into corporations around after that time but i'm about to give you some dates well during the industrial revolution there was going there's naturally going to be a spike in in corporations and you know in that era but that doesn't have have nothing to do with whether or not the the government entities at the time became corporations but but as what you the, the alluded to the birth certificate thing, I mean, I've I've what? looked into this and I've what? never seen any evidence of the birth or, of a birth certificate even, meaning even anything. The, all right, I'm going to cut you off. But even when you look up the doctrine of discovery and the Clearfield Trust versus United States three eighteen U dot S dot three sixty three, that'll prove a lot of stuff. What you're saying is not the truth. Okay, uh, what was the what was the citation three eighteen what? 318 U.S.363, dot Clearfield Trust versus United States. Okay. So what's it saying? Can you give me a synopsis of the law? Uh, or at least the case itself. I gotta look into it. I just put it down. I don't, I gotta look it up and and see it. So you're giving me a citation of of something that you believe uh, supports your argument, but you don't know anything about it. You haven't read it. Nah, but I could tell you, 1933, May 27th, the Securities Act 
was when they started turning birth certificates, all of these things in the bank bonds, social security, birth certificates. They start turning marriage license, driver's license, all into bank bonds. And this is why you don't need a license to travel. Well, yes, I understand that's the argument made, but I am I still haven't seen any evidence of that. And I have a fair amount of court cases that support me on that, that the states have the um, authority to regulate, uh, you know, travel on the highways um, by in including it up to uh, issuing, you know, requiring private citizens to uh, obtain driver's licenses. Nah, that's not sure. Okay, this is how you tell, this right. how you could tell that these 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 things are not government and the corporations because they are incorporated they're private and then once you really talk about law they're mm. there you will see that they're not the law just like my my last ticket whatever i sent them some judicial notice and challenging jurisdiction they never sent me nothing back that let me know right there they're not the law i'll be no. my last three well they're not under any obligation to respond to you for in that regard no they just they outside of the law they're outlaws i am the law now um okay judge dread um here i am the government i am the government I, and nobody has jurisdiction over me i got my own jurisdiction my nation we have our own jurisdiction the djor lawful heirs oh yeah uh, well, I don't know about that. Most of the t in most instances, that usually doesn't doesn't fly uh, when trying to argue that in the court. Yes, it does in the international court. That's why the international court just gave back the aboriginals of Australia their land and billions of compensation for spiritual loss. Ours well, is coming real soon. Well, international oh. court has as I'll, I'll put it to you. Uh, uh, bluntly, yeah, the, the United right. States yeah. rarely will in recognize an international court. Uh, as, have... Speaking of uh, somebody who is who's an attorney, international law is not really much of a thing here. Trust me, you're gonna say so. Um, sure. So, uh, do you have any any other uh, cases uh, that goes into your that supports your your claim on the right to travel? The department, yeah, I do, but give me a second. The Department of Motor Vehicles hasn't even been around for over a hundred years. Well, okay. The age so of that, an agency has nothing to do with whether or not it's legitimate. They they not even lawful, but I'm gonna give you some cases right now. Hold on. Let me see. And then don't forget to assess the QV Act of 1666. The like the Bull Inter Cateria Divina. This could be Act of 1666. Isn't that an English law? No. Okay, who enacted it then? So the Constitution. All right, well, that's the that's the QV Act. That's the the act when they was doing with the bank bonds and all that stuff. The trust setting up a trust. Okay, Make, uh, what does that have to do with the right to travel? Yeah. It don't have nothing to do with the right to travel. It's just a, it's just an act that was a date and event of American chronology. That's what I'm going through right now. So that uh, this say is saying American chronology. The you're saying that the Act of 1666 came around before the existence of the United States. How could it be part of it? Say that one more time. You're saying the this this law that you're citing it came out was enacted in 1666. Uh, about a hundred years before the United States even existed. 
The same way they set up laws before they before they set up the birth, birth not the birth yeah the birth controls, and the same way they set up laws before they put Planned Parenthoods in there to kill children. That's how they got to set up a law so they could do that. The same way they're gonna set up laws and make marijuana weed and put all types of chemicals and stuff in it that's gonna kill people. That's what they do. Well, not them. That's what this de facto doing business as government on the Moroccan Empire at Morocco. Okay. Um I got no clue about that one. Um, but I will go ahead and, and give you um a case uh uh for supporting my argument. You can go ahead and look it up on your own. Um, or I could just show you uh, a direct citation here. It's called Hendrick versus Maryland, uh, 235 U.S. 610. Uh, in that case, the, uh, the Supreme Court held that, the, uh, uh, that states can, uh, requires uh, uh, its uh, individuals to obtain driver's licenses in order to uh, 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 travel on the public highways. Um, so that is one case that's go that uh, that's very definitive in what the Supreme Court is saying, what the states can and cannot do. Yeah. So, I'll, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm looking for the case right now. Um... Go ahead, what you was gonna say? I'm sorry, I'm just gonna uh, share my screen right, right quick. So everything that you're saying, this is the reason why state laws, everything that you're saying, statutes, codes, ordinances, that's not law. Speeding, that's not the law. Yeah. Running a stop sign, of course it's the law. not the law. No, it's not. It's a statute, codes, ordinances, and regulations. And I'm about to tell you why it's not the law. You're gonna have to explain that, yeah. Anything that's not in the Constitution, the Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Anything that's not in the Constitution, notwithstanding, that means it's null and void. I'm sorry. So but I, no, 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 no. I have to stop you right there. Um, the, the, the Supreme Court, the Constitution gives the states the latitude to enact their own laws. It gives Congress the, the parameters in which they can enact law. The, it's in the Constitution yeah. itself. When on what planet are you saying that uh, that Congress cannot enact laws pursu uh, uh, pursuant to the Constitution? I I said the state, the legis the, the states, the cities, the towns, they cannot make laws if they're not um to the Constitution. They got to be derived from that Constitution. If not, it's nothing. Okay. they can't up their own laws if not that's color of law and it don't exist 10 uh, uh the 10th amendment the 10th I'm amendment says that uh, you know that which is not uh uh direct you know that which is not controlled by the legislators is controlled by the states of the people that's not a real constitution that's a that's a constitution for the corporation what the f wait so the bill of rights are not in the constitution of uh, and not your constitution what you say? The Bill of Rights, the ten, the ten, first ten amendments are not in your Constitution. Is it from the Constitution of 1787 for the United States of America, or is it the other one? Um, it it the first ten amendments to the Constitution of that was enacted in 1789. All right. So what you saying? I what I'm saying is. The First Amendment, uh, you know, speech, assembly, religion, Second Amendment, bear arms, Third Amendment, quartering of troops, Fourth Amendment, search and seizures, Fifth, uh, and so on through the Tenth Amendment, which re uh, grants the powers, uh, powers that are reserved for the states. In other words, to allow the states to enact their own laws. Nah. What do you mean, they nah? Can't. It's in the Constitution. Listen, I'm going to read this. United States Constitution, Article 3, Section 2, the judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity arising under this Constitution. The laws of the United States and treaties made 
or what shall be made under their authority to all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls to all cases of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction. That's what they're operating. Congratulations! You just so, you you just describe the jurisdiction it's of the U.S. courts. It has nothing to do with whether or not let's, Congress let's, can let's, can, let's, can pass laws and finish. states can uh, pass their own laws. And I got a case law too. Let me finish. It's only going to take two minutes, and I got a case law. To controversies to which the United States shall be a party, to controversies between two or more states, between a state and citizens of another state, between citizens of different states, between citizens of the same state claiming lands under grants of different states, and between a state or the citizens thereof, and foreign states, which will be like this Delaware, like what y'all make the corporations make up, citizens or subjects. In all cases affecting ambassadors or other pen, public ministers and consuls, and those which, uh, and those in which a state shall be a party, the Supreme Court shall have original jurisdiction. In all the other cases before mentioned, the Supreme Court shall have appellate jurisdiction, both as to law and fact, with such exceptions and under such regulations as the Congress shall make. The trial of all crimes except in cases of impeachment shall be by jury and such trial shall be held in the state where the said crime shall be have committed. But when not committed within the, any state, the trial shall be had at such place or places as the Congress may by law have directed. So that means all of these warrants is not original, official, de jure valid law um warrants if they're not signed by congress no they're and not me, that's, in, that's that's absolutely incorrect but go ahead finish your point that's the truth. or a sheriff now let me let me state let me state this this case this case is where rights secured by the constitution are involved there can be no rule making no rule making or statutes of codes or red regulations or ordinances so where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation which would abrogate them. Miranda versus Arizona. Yeah. 384. Okay, what the 436, 1966. And so why so, why and then but hold, hold, okay, you cited that. You cited Miranda versus Arizona. Now, but the problem you're having here is you are imparting your interpretation of what they're saying in Miranda to whatever arbitrary uh, 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 rules that you want to impose, a.k.a. you are trying to associate what the court is saying in Miranda versus Arizona to say, oh, that means I don't, I can, I don't have to drive, I have a driver's license. That is not oh, what, that is your, you are, that is your own in, uh, interpretation that you're putting in that is not supported by any, any court, any case that you could cite to me. I'm saying that I'm going to cite another case. An unconstitutional act is not law. It confers no rights. In order for it to be a crime, it got to be an injured party, first of all. That, and that's, okay. Gibson, that's, okay. that's, that's, that's that's a case, too. An unconstitutional act is not law. It confers no rights. It imposes no duties, affords no protection. It creates no office. It is in legal contemplation mm -hmm. as inoperative as though it had never been passed. Norton versus Shelby. Okay, thank you for for that citation. Now, where in that where in that case does it say I don't have to have a driver's license? It's basically you got rights, and these are your rights to and life. So, okay, correct, right. correct. Right. No, no, no. You're right. you're absolutely correct. But you are imposing your own interpretation of those rights to your uh, to uh, driving without a license. That's where you're fucking up. No, because you I'm you don't kidding. have any cases that have uh, that I can uh, uh, associate to love, uh, driving you know, with that right that you're trying to associate it with. Listen, I didn't even get to the cases really that I really want to get to that associate with the right to travel and all that. By all means. But another one is in our country, the people are sovereign and the government cannot sever its relationship to them by taking away their citizenship. Perez versus Brown Burnell, 356 U.S. I, I, I thought citizenship was a bad thing. 
So what, says, do you, what do you what do you care it, if the government strips away your citizenship? Because our citizenship is nationals, and they put us in a dead status. Put us in a silver little more two status. So it's they can't take away our national status. That's what it's really basically saying exercise exercise your national rights as the George is so uh, another case when acting to enforce a statute and then subsequent amendments to the present date the judge of the municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity your mm. mind is a terrible thing okay, okay. so he's acting what, what what's all right please cite to me that law court. i think i know exactly that law you're citing What's the law? What's the case that you're citing with that? I thought you said you know. You should be able to tell me. I thought you was going to tell me who versus who. Thompson I'll versus you Smith? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, you, do you, can you give me the facts of that case, please? The background. I didn't read the case. I'm okay, just you, citing okay, the case. You are, again, once again, you are citing to me a case that you don't even know what it's about. As as evidence you, for your argument, you could read the, the the basically the the little um paragraph and get a, a description of what is basically telling you're, you. No, you're getting a pair. You're 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 cherry picking a singular quote and determining that that and associating that with everything else that's part of the case and, and to further your argument. That is called cherry picking. No, I'm giving facts. Minis look, ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislator. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities. Burns versus SUPP. Now, let me see when I, if I can get to these cases real quick on right to travel. Hmm. And first of all, let me see. Now, our right to travel is, is really, it's just an unalienable birthright. And that's according to who? The organic land, nature's law, the heirs of the land. So, just your own interpretation as such? No, the, um... Hold on. Articles 3, IV, and VI of the American Constitution Covenant of 1774 to 1781 and treaty as lawfully adopted for the United States Republic, establishing its Republican form of government. The said American Constitution established the people supreme law of the land standing upon the principles of moral government to secure the rights of the people and to keep limited government operatives bound and in check by official oath and by official bond let it be known that down from the ancient ones our primogenitors came the lodial and sonomy principles which established the supreme law of the land okay uh all right, I found it. There we go. Thompson versus Smith, 155VA367, Supreme Court of Virginia. So this is a state case and not a Supreme Court case, by the way. Uh, 
Let me let me hit you in the head with this real quick. Before no, I, I really want to. I re I want I want I you that, to read this with this this case that you said that you did not read, but you are are quoting or getting a synopsis of it from. Go ahead. And, okay, I'll and I'll give you the I'll give you the the uh, the money the y'all y'all's money shot on uh, uh, page five, uh, page three seventy seven. The right of the citizen to, to travel upon the public highways and to transport his property thereon in the ordinary course of life and business is a common right which he has under his right to enjoy life, liberty, uh, to acquire and possess property, and to pursue happiness and safety, he includes the right in doing so to use the ordinary and usual conveyances of the day, and under the existing modes of travel, includes the right to drive a horse, drawn carriage or wagon thereon, or to operate an automobile thereon for the usual and ordinary purposes of life and business. It is not a mere privilege, like the privilege of moving a house in the street, operating a business stand in the street, or transporting persons or property for hire along the street, which a city may permit or prohibit at will. This uh, seems pretty solid, right? Well, the next paragraph. The exercise of such, co of such right the city may, under its police power, regulate in the interest of public safety and welfare, but it may not arbitrarily or unreasonably uh, prohibit or restrict it, nor may permit one to exercise or refuse to permit another of like qualifications under the conditions and circumstances to exercise it. The regulation of the ex exercise of the right to drive a private automobile on the city of the streets may be accomplished in part by the city granting, refusing, revoking, under the rules of general application, permits to drive an automobile, automobile on a street. But such permits may not be arbitrarily refused or revoked or, permit, or permit to, permitted to be held by some and refused other like, like qualifications under like circumstances or conditions. So if I were you, I would try to find a different, a different case for your right to travel. All right, I got you. The right to travel, the right to mode of conveyance, the right to locomotion are all absolute rights and the police cannot make void the exercise of rights. State versus Armstead, 60 S.778, 779, 7081. I'm sorry, say that goes again. Right here. here it goes right here on your screen. And here goes another one. Hold up. Don't cut me off. We got like four or five of them now. We in, we, we, we in the right direction. I just had to... I didn't. Get uh, in the right okay, direction. I want to. I do. I, I'll let you go ahead, but I want to. I want to note note that in your list of the the five uh, five that I see there, number four is the Thompson versus Smith case I just cited to you, and as as a furtherance of his argument. So now that I told, I gave you the further context of the case itself. Uh, what sort of uh, reliance are you giving to the rest of the bullet points at this that where you're getting this document at? Facts. These are facts. You can't even find though I facts. debunked one of them right off the bat. You didn't debunk it. You I did debunk it. it. I debunked. I did. I gave. I quoted you directly where the case Thompson versus Smith, the Supreme Court of Virginia, said that this the city can require you to get a permit to drive a license uh, to get a, to drive a car. I don't know about that, but I, I did hear you. Did you not hear what I just said? But go ahead, please. I don't know go ahead. You, yeah, you you said that, but I don't know if that's true. Like, I, I, I gotta read. Do you it want me to show? Do you I, want me to uh, uh, share my screen where I'm getting this case law at? I'm getting it directly from Lexus. You can share it for the people, but I'm just looking directly into what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to get distracted, so you can share it. Go for it. Go ahead and and, and recite. You know your list. Uh, I won't. I won't interrupt. All right, so the use of the highways for the purpose of travel and transportation is not a mere privilege, but a common and fundamental right of which the people and natural beings cannot be rightfully deprived. Chicago Motor Coach versus Chicago 337, Illinois 200, 169, NE 22. And then Lee Gear versus Chicago. And then Boone versus Clark, Southwest um, Jura First Highways. And then the right to park or travel is part of the liberty of which the natural person, remember I told y'all two different type of persons in that constitution, an artificial person. Which you haven't, so which like, you haven't backed oh, up with, so, but go ahead. So when the highwaymen, the gangs in New York, hire criminals with guns, pull you over, they're not really talking to you. They talking to that birth certificate or that social security, Cessna QV trust. So that's why they always say, give me your license, give me this and that. 
Well, you're required so, to have a license to drive in the state, so of course they're going to ask you for ID the first time, they, the first moment they stop you. No, you're not. You don't need a license to travel. I already gave I you could, a citation that says otherwise, but... I could travel right now to anywhere I want to go. If if I had a, 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 a conveyance, I could travel anywhere I want to go. I could put jackpot on my license plate and can't nobody do nothing to me. Until you get stopped by the officer, and then he's going to ask you about what's going on. And I just why you don't have a, why don't why don't why you don't have a, a a plate a proper plate on your car, and then he's going to ask you for your license. You're saying you're not going to have one, and then you're going to be arrested and put in jail for the next thirty days for driving without a license. And then if, if, it, if that dude has to get lose his job, I get out. I have a lien on him. I go out there. You can't put a lien on him just for that purpose. Yes, I can. And for the record, That's states not... are cracking down on that type of practice, Ben. And on my life, liberty, and happiness. They make jails for things like that. Driving's a that's privilege, not a right. And that's something that you can't seem to get, oh, uh, get your thing around. It's a, it's a right. Driving is no, a privilege, driving, not a right. Driving is a privilege. Traveling is a right. You're right. You could call, you could call it whatever the hell you want. Whether it's traveling, it traveling, driving. floating, uh, uh, operating... It, it, you can all call right, it well, whatever you want. This, the police and the state and the various courts and case law all say it's the same damn thing. There is no distinction. There is literally no distinction between traveling and driving. The they're not the law. They're operating under color of law. They're de facto. Except, that, uh, except when they put you in handcuffs. Nah, they ain't going to never put me in handcuffs. You say that they're not the law, except for every single person disagrees with you. Nah, every single person don't agree with me. Noble Drew Ali didn't agree with me. I don't, I, uh, well, I don't care oh, what oh, Noble Drew Ali no. said or didn't say. The, the so-called government didn't disagree with him either, because he set up 13 temples in 13 different cities. So, well, uh, well, almost 13 cities. So. Well, well, the right to uh, well, that, that's he has the right to practice his religion, so that's a part of the First Amendment right that no, you don't associate came, with. Listen, listen, when he first came, he set it up as a civic organization. He was okay. teaching that civics jurisdiction, unalienable birthrights, and then in 1928, right before his death, he set up a religious organization in cook county in illinois he he registered an affidavit lawful affidavit that's our authority as moors so this whole right which to nobody travel recognizes our... except for your your association the thing is the whole problem is like on a birth certificate i ain't gonna get into that but i should get into it on them birth certificates that's a bank bond, and they put us under a dead status, and, and they control your estate. You know what I'm saying? They're saying you abandon your estate because once you transact business in Smith, Jones, and Johnson, a European name, you don't own anything. That's not your name. You got to honor your ancestors so your days will be long upon the land because our ancestors own rivers, and they own this land. No, so you don't. The, the whole birth certificates, like the whole situation with the – what was I saying? Um, the whole situation with this this traveling and stuff is is need to be corrected, and that's why they got a Department of Transportation and they got the motor vehicles. See the difference? Transportation and motor vehicles. There is no difference. I'm telling you. I I mean I I don't know how many I how many times I've had to tell people that there is no difference between a motor vehicle, an automobile, a car. When and they are when all I, treated I, the same by in the view of the law. Lawyers, when I talk to certain lawyers, they say you gotta call the Department of Transportation if you want private tags on your plate. When I when I talk to certain sovereign citizens that's Europeans out in Georgia, they show me their private tag plates. I don't care but what they said, say, they're wrong as well. I, I don't care what, from, what alleged lawyers say to you either. The motor vehicle and the Department of Justice is two different corporations. They're not the same. And you probably, I don't know this for sure, but you probably can go through the Department of Transportation and get some type of plates. Just like the same way you could but, go to the Department of 
treasury and get lawful money. The, the Federal Reserve notes is not real money. I, I, I understand that it's also something that you, you believe. Um, but no, that's know. facts. That's facts. That's why I said go look up Lewis McFadden. Meanwhile, I can go, go, go get some McDonald's right now and they'll take my fiat Lewis currency. McFadden, Congressional record 1934. These are facts. It's not something I believe. No, they are, they're, 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 you're, you're reciting the opinion of a random uh, a member of Congress that nobody else subscribes to. No, these are documented facts. That's what I'm saying. They're not you. documented. I, again, I've already debunked at least several of your documented facts, and you seem to jump from one thing to another when you're trying to recite these facts. You have already admitted to, that you have not even read a lot of these laws that you're citing to me yeah, as supporting your argument. To read them i got them in my head i live them you have to read them to understand the context of the case you cannot just simply uh, uh rely on this uh, this document that you're 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 pro processing to people to uh, say that that is exactly what is going on in the case that it's cited you have to read these things let me read then. let me read you have to read, read and understand the context surrounding it because Kent let versus Dulles, I'll say number three, read, Kent versus Dulles has to do with the communist uh, people trying to get a passport and they were denied because uh, the government had them as alleged members of the communist party. That has literally fuck all to do with driver's licenses. You nah, cannot I got associate to do it. that. I got to do with the Federal Reserve banks. That's what we was talking about. Lawful money, what's lawful money? You're confusing yourself now. No, I know I'm not confusing that... myself. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Say, yeah, I'm killing you on this debate. No, you're, like, no, dude, man. you're not killing anything. I'm pointing out the fact that you don't even know what you're citing, you and you're attributing bad, them as truth. You don't even know the cases, the context of the cases that you're citing to support your argument, and then you're still associating them as truth. When I just pointed out to you several different cases that you're citing that do not support you and in fact contradict what you're trying to argue. So, right, I, so I, if you're saying that you're killing me in this debate, I don't know who the hell you're getting that from. Let's do this like this. I'm going to I'm going to cite these cases, these these three cases. You said you already knew one so we can skip through four. Thompson versus Smith, right? Mm. No, you can't do no. that. You said no, go, yeah, we go, did. no, we could go ahead and do that, fine. Armstead, so, all right, and then I want, this is what I want you to do. I want you to, after I'm done reading these cases, I want you to tell me case laws that prove that this is wrong. That's what you got to do. Not your opinion, not how you feel, okay. not deep. It's tell me case laws that prove that this is wrong. So, the use of the highway is for the purpose of travel and transportation. Transportation and travel, not motor vehicle, not driving. Is a is not a mere privilege. It's not a mere privilege. You you're, said driving. Is you're privilege. quoting driving Thompson is, versus Smith again, by the, the way. Reason, no, I'm quoting Chicago Motor Coach versus Chicago 337 Illinois. The reason why driving is a privilege because you're transporting 18 wheelers. You're doing Uber and stuff like that. You got passengers, so driving is a privilege. Yeah, driving is. You were doing tractor trailers. You work. You you got cars and you transporting cars and stuff. That's driving, eighteen wheelers and stuff. Operating in commerce. Yeah. So, but a common and fundamental right of which the public and natural beings cannot be rightfully deprived. The right to park or travel is a part of the liberty. So they're depriving you of your liberty when they stop you of which the natural person citizen cannot be deprived without due process of law under the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution. Kent versus those. The right of a citizen to travel upon the public highways and to transport one's property thereon, either by carriage or automobile, is not a mere privilege which a city may prohibit or permit at will, but a common right which he or she has under the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, State police power extends only to immediate threats to public safety, health, welfare, ETC, Michigan versus Duke. The state is prohibited from violating substantive rights, Owens versus City, 455 U.S. 662, 1980. And it cannot do by one power, e.g. police power. 
that which is, for example, prohibited expressly to any other such power, e.g. taxation, eminent domain, as a matter of law, all right, U.S. and U.T. Daniels, nor indirectly that which is prohibited to it directly. Now, traveling in the automobile on the public roads was not a threat to the public safety or health and constituted no hazard to the public, and such a traveler owed nothing more than due care as regards of tort for negligence to the public, and the owner owed no duty to the public, e.g. state, he or she, and his or her auto having equal rights to and on the roadways or highways as horses and wagons, ETC. The same right is still substantive rule, and that speeding, running stop signs, traveling without license plates or registration are not threats to public safety, and thus are not arrestable offenses. Christie versus Elliott, California versus Farley, 98 SED. Under the United States Republic's constitutional system of government, see what I said, not the, not the incorporated de facto government, and, uh, and upon the individuality and intelligence of the citizen, the state does not claim to control one's conduct of others leaving one the sole judge as to all that affects oneself, Mulgar versus Kansas, where rights secured by the Constitution are involved, there can be no rulemaking or legislation which would abrogate them. This is why I said anything notwithstanding the Constitution, null and void, Miranda versus Arizona, the claim and exercise of constitutional rights cannot be converted into a crime, Miller versus Kansas. So everything that you try to say about locked up and this and that, that's just saying, the claim and exercise of constitutional rights cannot be converted into a crime. For a crime to exist, there must be a <laughs> for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party, i.e., corpus delecti. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed on one because of this constitutional right. Shearer and Cullen, and I want to quote Gibson versus Boyle for for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. Gibson versus Boyle. If any tribunal court finds absence of proof of jurisdiction over a person and subject matter. The case must be dismissed. Louisville versus Motley. It's like seven different jurisdictions. The accuser bears the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Lack of federal jurisdiction cannot be waived or overcome by agreement, overcome by agreement of parties. Griffin versus Matthews. So I'll, I'll pull it back up and I'll, I'll, you can start, I guess, right here and okay. try to debunk with cases. No, well, the thing is, I, you know, uh, the, you're the, Burden of proof is on you still, but I'll go ahead and, and point out a few of these things. But I will go ahead and recite uh, uh, Kendrick versus Maryland again. In the absence of national uh, uh, 235 U.S. 610, in the absence of national legislation covering the subject, a state may rightfully prescribe uniform regulations necessary for the public safety and order in respect to the operation of its highways of all motor vehicles, those moving in inter interstate commerce, as well as others. And to this end, it may require the registration of such vehicles and the licensing of their drivers, charging, therefore, reasonable fees graduated according to the horsepower of the engines, uh, practical measure of size, speed, and difficulty of control. Um, as well as, again, Kent versus Dulles. Like I said, that had to do with uh, uh, the issuing or uh, the re revocation of passports for uh, individuals um, who uh, they, the government alleged were members of the Communist Party. Again, that so that has nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with uh, the issuance of driver's licenses whatsoever. So I don't know why you're citing that case to me. As far as uh, you know, Michigan versus Duke, state police power extends only immediate threats to public safety. Well, no shit. Whereas I don't know what you're where you're getting this California uh, case, but it's a California case. It's not a U.S. Supreme Court case. But not notwithstanding, even if I wanted to go ahead and use that. Um, we already have Dixon versus Love, 431 U.S. 105. Uh, here, Miller versus Reed, 176 F3D, uh, 1202. What are you saying? That you saying that depicts, what, that depicts the first case you're saying because what? Just sum it up real quick. Oh, oh, you want me to sum up cases, but you won't sum up the ones that you're citing. No, I'm saying, why did you, what, you saying... That case that you just read, you're saying that that, that depicts the case that I just said. Why, though? Because that's this is supreme law of the land. You're reading state laws, state laws and ordinances. I just I just cited Hendrick versus Maryland, which is the United States Supreme Court. Oh, OK. 
and but and then you're going to and then uh, then once i uh also what i said too was that uh you also citing um uh cases that aren't from the supreme court like i said thompson versus smith is from virginia california versus yeah. farley uh cedric whatever it's the california third district well, uh so third district one. court Kent versus Dulles is a U.S. Supreme Court case, but it had to do with passports. It has nothing to do with uh, driver's licenses. All right, so look, I got some people in my chat. Peace and love to the brothers and sisters in the chat. Somebody said I like the hat. All right, peace. Thank you. So, Motor Vehicle Act of 1934. Treaties are the supreme law of the land. We are not sovereign citizens. Whoa, dude just disrespected the prophet Noble Jew Ali. I was trying to basically enf enforce to him that this United States is a corporation, but he was asking me for the law. I couldn't find the law. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, peace and love to everybody in the chat. But we can continue. If y'all want to add on, y'all can add on. We can keep going. Okay, I mean, uh, but uh, I can I, also get—I can also provide you some practical applications uh, in practical cases uh, in which uh, people have tried to assert that the you know they have the the so-called right to travel and not having the drive travel uh, drive a driver's license, and you know they kind of uh, failed throughout the uh, throughout. Um, so I would really love if you if you could find me a case where somebody. Uh, uh, cited these cases in in fighting a traffic ticket, fighting a, a suspension of license. Um, I know Moore's, and that I was know successful. That, I know more that was driving. It's it's all on the internet. I know more that was driving with no license plate. Got pulled over. He's he kept standing on his square, enforcing his constitution. And the the um public service said, "I'm sorry for my my um guy," because he called the supervisor. He said, "I'm sorry for my." Employee pulling you over is disturbing you. His here's his business card. Go on and have a good day. Next time, just try not to speed around here. No ticket or nothing. Another another video with a more riding with Moore's tags. They pull him over and question him about the tags. He pull out documents and break everything down to them. They sitting out there for about ten minutes talking. Next thing you know, he pull off in that Moore's government car. So, no tickets or nothing. So. Yeah, this stuff is okay, very real. Okay, we're citing, uh, citing a couple of videos um, and it's a case that somebody, alleged, some authority that somebody told you. Okay. I want to go through this Motuo Propio letter from Pro Francis to Obama because this is going to um, have the a lot of Europeans shaking in their boots when they hear this. Because you know about ecclesiastical law, that's the highest law kind of to like that's that puts you in your own jurisdiction. That's the reason why we have our own jurisdiction because no Drew Ali registered. What the hell does the Vatican have anything to do with U.S. law? Because he owns all the corporations okay, in you, the United States. All right, you assert that, but you haven't provided any evidence for it. Look, they said Pope Francis. I'm just looking at a top story. It says Pope Francis changes canon law for religious who desert the community. Okay. What does that have to do with us, the United States, what, or U.S. law, or state law, or municipal law? Again, you, you need to provide evidence that says that the Pope or the Vatican, the Vatican law, is, uh, 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 is superior on, to I'm on, I'm on. Congress and the Constitution. Now, if you don't have any evidence I'm for on. that, you're going to have to, you need to provide it. Hold on. Now listen, now this is from the apostolic letter issued motu propio of the Supreme Pontiff Francis on the jurisdiction of judicial authorities of the Vatican City State. That's a criminal matters. Which is applicable oh, oh, oh. to the Vatican City State. Where the fuck is the Vatican City State? It's in fucking Italy. Why no, are you not. associating that with the United States? Because the Pope owns United States. Oh my fucking god! You have no evidence for that. You haven't provided any fucking evidence for that. But you're not now. But you're just going to assert that and then claim that this fucking document is in any way, shape, or form applicable to us in the United States. 
The United States is a corporation, not a country. Oh my god. Uh, again, which another assertion without evidence. He owns the all of the corporation. Again, assertion without evidence. All right. Let me read this letter real quick. In our times, the common good is increasing threatened by this, transnational I, 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 I don't want to interrupt you, but you're going you need to establish that the that this is in any way, shape, or form uh uh applicable to the United States before you can recite it. You need to establish that the Vatican actually in fact is in control and therefore this this document is uh applicable to us. The Holy See. This is all churches. Roman Catholic churches? All churches. Roman Catholic all, churches. All skull and bone kickback agreements, all secret societies oh, answer to the Pope. Okay. Another all, all all members of the crown, all Roman soldiers answer to the Pope. He's the highest authority for y'all. For the Albions. I'm not an Albion. You're not a Moor. No. So what are you? I'm Puerto Rican. Nah, that's a that's not even a nationality. An ethnicity. It's an it's actually a nationality, but well, eh, we want to be a some some of us want to be an independent state, but that's neither here nor there. But I am Puerto Rican. You know, my family was from Puerto Rico. We could trace our lineage so, through, you know, through our ancestry. You're, you're. How do you do that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you can't. No, you can't. Yeah, I can. My can't. father sends in a piece of a DNA to. Uh, uh, he went sent his DNA to uh, a university that that's, uh, that traces genealogy. You hear yourself right who now? The, yeah. Who, who the fuck are you to say uh, that my father's uh, wrong? <laughs> Yo, you know what you got to do to get your DNA, right? Uh, take a send a blood sample. What else? No. You got to dig up all of your ancestors that died. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god, you don't even know understand science too. Um No. Telling you the truth, you gotta go dig up all your ancestors or go search birth records and death records like war records, stuff like that. That's what you gotta do. You're to saying I have kids. to literally exhume bodies Anyone. in order to determine my ancestry. <laughs> oh man. Ain't no ain't no DNA test gonna tell you that. They they that's like twenty percent truth. 20% truth. Another assertion without evidence. Man, we're on a roll here. Alright. Well, yeah, this is, de he's dealing with the jurisdiction. Okay. I mean, you say I'm an Albion, which I don't even know what the fuck that means. Um, yeah, on top of that, on top of that, why would he send this letter to Obama? And then why would Obama go all the way over to Egypt, the capital dominion of the Moorish Empire, and well, the Moorish Empire is not even a thing. I I hate to break it to you. Well, listen, listen I didn't mean to say that, but Barack Obama goes to Egypt and he does the rights of indigenous speak. No, he he went out there, he walked, he did something, and then he came back, did the rights of indigenous rights of indigenous people. So all of us to proclaim our national right to the indigenous people was a UN document that's not even binding on anything. Yes, it is. No, it's not. The U.S. never said, never uh, acclimated to anything of it. It's uh, even the people who signed on to it. It's no, it's not. It's non-binding. Again, you don't know what you that's are not, even hold citing. On, hold, on, hold on. So this is why I see news articles saying that the the United States wants to withdraw from the UN, huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? What the hell does that have to do with the rights of indigenous people's document? Do you realize that there are That's several it. UN resolutions that are non-binding? That has fuck all to do with the US is sentiment on getting out of the EU. No. The reason the why uh, part of the reason why people want to get out of the EU is because the US funds it. 
Maybe we don't want to pay that money anymore. You're you trying to it's associate that as though as though oh that means they want to get out of contracts, they want to get out of resolutions. That's something that you're pulling out of your ass. This thing is not about money because ain't nobody getting lawful money. They ain't getting gold oh. and silver. Uh, here we money. go again. Reserve notes, bank bonds. That's, yeah, that's like yeah. This but, stuff is about right there. Right. Well, that's right. They, while I can I can go get a Big Mac with my fiat currency. That's not real money. Actually, a birth certificate is proof that human trafficking still exists. No, that's a new one. I'm, uh, that's a new one to me. That's facts. Oh, of course it is. I'm sure you. I'm sure you think it's facts. You know, saying saying something is facts doesn't make it facts. By the way. No, the reason how you know a birth certificate is proof that human trafficking exists because back in the days when the life of jesus and all in the bible and all that even abraham lincoln's time abraham lincoln didn't have a birth certificate he wrote his birth in his bible in his holy bible his family bible okay so that lets you know right then and there they just brought these birth certificates in so why did they do it to label us as slaves or corporations just be again just because like, something new comes along does not mean it's little illegitimate nobody, nobody has gotten paid since 1933 when they overthrew the republic and set up a democracy democracy means demons okay etymology. so now so now you're associating not now you're saying 1933 is when the u.s was overthrown before you said it was 1771 then it was 1791 then it was 1913 oh, and I'll then overdraw I said Noble Draw Ali. Then it was 1871. You you Draw need to get your crashed. dates right if you're going to talk about when the U.S. was overthrown, dude. Because you're kind of all over the place, and it kind of tells me that you you don't even know what you're what you're saying. No, I'm saying Noble Drew Ali made the stock market crash 1913. Citation then, needed. After all, after all that. <laughs> After all that, they was trying to reach, like get get back, like their profit and prop, like they were trying to get back and build up their greatness. So they started stealing our birthrights. Nineteen thirty, FDR. It's a it's it's acts and laws that. Wait, that, so now we're now we're nineteen thirty instead of nineteen thirty three. I said nineteen thirties. Well, you gave a specific date of 1933, and also 1934 was also in there as well. But again, you keep on saying 1913 when the Federal Reserve came around, 1871 with the Act of 1871. Then you were saying that uh, the the bad Constitution was 1791 or 1771. You're again, you're going all over the place, which again tells me that you don't know what you're talking about. All right, how about this? You know the American Bar Association. I do know the American Bar Association as a lawyer. I should. I ought to. Okay. Watch this. Do you know that every acting judge is a is a is an attorney? He's not a judge. Uh right. Wait, say that again. You know that every acting judge is an attorney. He's not a judge. He's really an attorney. Judges are also attorneys. You can't be a judge and an attorney. Yes, That's you a can. Member of Congress. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Not no. Not nah. Yes, you can. I'm. A, you're talking to a fucking lawyer. Yes, they can. Well, if the judge is, if the acting judge is an attorney, and the prosecutor is the attorney, and the DA is an attorney, that's a conflict of interest. A DA and a prosecutor, are the same person, but notwithstanding, well, there is no conflict of interest. That case got to get thrown out because they all members of the bar. Doesn't matter. You know, that's not a fair case. Yes, it you does have to. Matter. No, it doesn't matter. You, uh, uh, you have, law being law able to write, uh, practicing attorneys are not in league with each other. There's no fucking conflict I, of interest. This, this is why when I went to court, when I went to court, and the judge said, the acting judge said, tried to call the straw man. I said, I am Devon Bay. He tried to call the straw man again. I said, I'm Devon Bay. You mean Somebody your actual name? Up. Somebody came in the court. I said, I, I told him my free national name. I don't have a name. I have an appellation. I'm not as I'm, I'm a free natural, free more, a natural man. 
So I told him my free national name. I said, Devon Bay. So he said, basically, somebody came in and whispered in his ear. They took a break. And then when I sent my proclamation jurisdiction and they try to switch judges and this and this and that, make a long story short, they couldn't really do nothing. So they basically just stopped sending me letters. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what happened. Um... I got it all documented. I got a documentary out. And I'm about to start selling it for seven notes. So a deck, a, a <laughs> documentary, a documentary of your alleged wave that you got out of jail because you wouldn't say your your I, your birth name. Oh, not out of jail because I would never go to jail for a traffic ticket. You can't go to jail for if you didn't commit a crime. But what I'm trying to say is, all three of my last recent cases when I was using more science because I am a more scientist. When I was using more science, they science. they respect me. They treated me like a human. They treated me like God, actually. They bowed down to me. Who bowed I'm down master. to you? I'm a master. I'm sure you are. Uh, yeah, I, for, with all due respect, you don't look like uh, no divine being to me. Um, well, looks, look, looks are not nothing. You ever heard of the saying, Take the message and lead a messenger, or don't judge a book by its cover. That's fair. It's not nothing. What's in the mind is everything. That's why I wear the same clothes every day, so people think I'm bummy and poor. Do you wear the same clothes every day because what? I want people to think I'm bummy and poor. And when I when I want to dress up, I'll dress up, but there's no need to. Okay. I mean, that's, hey, the, you, you do you. I mean, I'm not going to judge. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm not going to really um, uh, take your word on this, on these claims that you're making. But uh, that, then again, you already said you're going to put your documentary where you're going to, I guess, showcase the evidence and provide the proof of dismissal and so on as, you know, but you're putting it behind a paywall, but that's fine. How many people does you know without a birth certificate? Somebody in my chat wanted to know that. I don't know many people without one. Because people get a birth certificate. It's, it's a standard, standard practice when you're born. It's normal. So what about... They, they trying to call so-called certain Mexicans immigrants. Okay. Not so-called Mexicans. But they're trying to call the Mexicans so-called immigrants. Why are they trying to call them immigrants? Is it because the birth certificate? I'm sorry, what? Is it because of the birth certificate? It's because they haven't provided uh they're well they're saying they're immigrants if they are if they were born and raised in Mexico and don't have US citizenship. Then by definition, they're an immigrant. You can see me, right? I see your screen that you're sharing. And then you see me through the screen, like I got my, my OBS running too. I don't see you. I just see uh, your, your, your dashboard on YouTube. It should be switching over to my screen soon, but yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I yeah. know I, I, I know I got. But well, Sorry. it's been how long is it? How long we've we been going here? About An hour and seven minutes. Okay, I think I think this might be a time for uh to to conclude. Um, so I'll 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 allow you you know to to get your get your word in and that's, and uh, we'll we'll go ahead and conclude. All right. Well, I'm just I'm just going to end it off by saying. I am the government. I am the law. I'm a descendant of the great pharaohs, Moabites, Canaanites, the great pharaohs of Egypt. I am Devon Bay and Propia Persona, Sui Juris, at all times. I am exercising all my rights at all times. And, you know, I just reserve all my rights forever without prejudice. And I just, I don't know. What else can I say?
Nobu Ali was the most powerful man that ever stood foot on America soil. He's opened up. The, he basically opened up the Freedmen's Bureau, the real Freedmen's Bureau, you know, and gave us our land, our our heirs to. He, he told us about we being an heirs to the world vast estate. Gave us our birthright. Taught us about our birthright. He didn't give it to us. Taught us about our land, our nationality, our identity, our law, spirituality. So I can't wait for Donald Trump to contact me or the Pope Francis to write me or somebody acting in government to send me some type of letters telling me they're going to give me my land grants and start giving me compensation because soon I, I feel it that it's going to come. So I'm not even really worried about too much, but I know a lot of stuff. I know Moors right now that's living without even paying no mortgage because they enforce the Constitution and using more science. So. This stuff is very valid. Everything Noble Draw Ali did, his claims was 100% valid. And that's all I really want to say. Okay. And travel, you got a right to travel free. And driving is operating in commerce, moving like tractor trailers or transporting taxis and stuff like that. So, yeah, you got a right to travel that freely. Okay. Sounds good, man. Um, uh, at least for mine. Um, you know, we had a we had a, a very uh, interesting discussion. Um, I do think that uh, we have uh, kind of got a, a glimpse of uh, you know you know Moorish identity and Moorish ideology when it comes to application of the law. Um, I will say that I guess I'm kind of disappointed in the sense that I didn't uh, wasn't really provided much that I hadn't already seen. Um, a lot of the cases that uh, were cited uh, were have all been uh, addressed and debunked long before. Um, a lot of the views on uh, on the Act of 1871, on 1913 the, Reservation, on um, the 1933 bankruptcy, The uh, a lot of these cases are kind of like rehashed, uh, things that we've already seen, we've already discussed. And uh, so it's kind of, it's it really hasn't been nothing new. Um, you know, we kind of got a glimpse of uh, uh, Devon's, uh, you know, usage of uh, case law and usage of uh, terminology and citations when he then admits that he didn't even read the actual cases that he's citing. Um, so, you know, kind of gives you a sense of where he's coming from in terms of what he's taking in as truth, where he's getting his information from and so on. So that's all, what I got to say. I think I think the, the what we just saw today kind of speaks for itself. And I'm going to just let the audience decide. Um, you know who won this discussion and who didn't let me say one more thing let me say one more thing all right y'all could go subscribe to my youtube channel watch all my videos share them out tweet them out cast for the great one topic c-a-s-p-a-t-h-e-g-r-e-a-t with the number one topic and another thing is 1855 president lincoln sl um slander case discrimination case president lincoln was the last lawful president he was a constitutionist lawyer 1855, President Lincoln de defended a Moor. So he said, this is his quote, uh, President Lincoln, my, I quote, my client is not black. He said, my client is not, he said, my client does not have the same skin color of us, but my client is not black. It's a crime to be black in America. I may say my client is, may not be black, but he is a Moor. The judge, the, the judge said, you mean a more like M O O R E? Okay. okay, where are you getting this citation from? 1855. You can look it up. I got this. Um, well, you can look it up in any document, court document. 1855. Okay, President. I, I, thank you, Devon Bay. I think you kind of also just re highlighted uh, oh, yeah. the entire discussion with oh, your yeah. citation that you probably didn't even read the case itself. But I appreciate well, you. Uh, I appreciate it, man. You have a good, you have yourself a good night. Okay, take care. 17 sundry free moors okay guys hang on a second here Oh, well, I don't have the mic, uh, or excuse me, the camera uh, set up on here. Uh, but, um, yeah.
And there it is. You got yourself a glimpse of uh, a glimpse of crazy. Um, but like I said before, we we experienced here we go. We experienced uh, somebody who clearly does not know what he's citing. Somebody who doesn't read what he's trying to convey. Like any other sovereign citizen, um, he just spouts off assertions without providing any evidence for it. And what evidence he provides? It's anecdotes. It's anecdotal evidence. Um. And the